let's take a look at some higher order derivatives. What we're really doing is just taking a derivative once and then another time. So for this first example, I've got um, a function x cubed plus 2x. I want to find the second derivative. That's what this double prime right here means. Well, I need to start by finding the first derivative. So f prime of x, finding that first derivative using the power rule, is equal to 3x squared plus 2. Now, if I want to find the derivative again, I can go ahead and move on and find that second derivative. What I'm doing is just taking the derivative of what I found prior. So f of x, lots of parentheses there, prime. So I need to find the derivative of that previous value. Uh, 3x squared, let's see, so the 2 comes out in front, so I get 3 times 2x plus 0, which is equal to uh, 6x. Let's do another example. For this cosine of 2x, I need to find the second derivative, which means I'm going to apply the derivative twice. This one does have a composition. So I've got as my outer function, cosine of 2x, and I also have that inner function of 2x. We're going to apply a chain rule as we go through the first derivative. Now, if you need some more practice with chain rules, check out my link in the description below for a video. Let's go ahead and move through this one. So we are looking for the first derivative. So f prime of x, let's work through that chain rule. Taking the derivative of the cosine first with respect to or holding the 2x fixed, the derivative of cosine is negative sine of whatever's on the inside. Let me grab my green pen. I'm keeping that 2x fixed. So I am done with the outer function cosine and I'm on to my inner function. So I'm gonna multiply on the derivative of 2x. The derivative of 2x is just two. Now I can rewrite this in a nicer order. Let's put the two out in front, so negative two. And then I've got the sine of 2x. What I was looking for though was the second derivative. So let's go ahead and do f double prime. So f double prime, that second derivative, is going to be the derivative of what I found up above. I'm gonna pull the negative two out in front and I'm going to again apply a chain rule. My outer function this time is the sine. My inner function is still the 2x. So I take the derivative of my sine. The derivative of sine is cosine. So I've got cosine and I leave the inner function fixed. The inner function is 2x. So I'm done with the outer function. The derivative of the inner function is two. Let's go ahead and clean this up, put our constant multipliers together. I've got a two and a two and a negative. So I get negative four cosine of two x and that is the second derivative. Next we're going to see one where we're going to find a derivative using a product rule. They can get complicated pretty quick. Here comes the next example. In this next one we're again finding a second derivative. We will do a third derivative in the next example. This one is x squared times e to the x. I can put that multiplication symbol in the middle so that means I do want to use a product rule. And that product rule is f prime g plus f g prime. Let's go ahead and find that first derivative. So f prime of x is equal to the derivative of f first, that's going to be 2x. We're going to leave g, so e to the x, plus, now we're going to leave f, so that's going to be x squared, and then we're going to take the derivative of g, which there's not much to do because the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So this is our first derivative. We're going to find the second derivative. As we are finding the second derivative, we need to apply the product rule not just one, once, but twice. These get pretty ugly pretty quick. Let's just do it step by step here. Um, f in the first one is 2x and then g is e to the x. Let's do that one first. I'm going to put that into parentheses so you can see exactly what I've done. So in this first set of parentheses using our product rule, the derivative of f, so the derivative of 2x is 2 and then I leave g, so that's going to be e to the x, 
plus, now I'm going to leave f, which is 2x, and the derivative of g is e to the x. So there is the first term's product rule. Now we're going to do the next product rule. We've got a different f and g. So f is x squared, but g is again that e to the x. I've got the plus from the problem, and then parentheses are going to start the product rule for x squared e to the x. Take your time with these steps. No step is super difficult. They're just tedious. Lots of places to make a small mistake. So again with our product rule, the derivative of f, the derivative of x squared is 2x. And then I take e to the x unchanged, plus I keep x squared, and the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. Now you can see I've got just a tiny bit of cleanup that I can do. I do have a 2x e to the x and another 2x e to the x. So we've got our second derivative, which I can rewrite now as a 2 e to the x plus 4x e to the x plus x squared e to the x. Next, let's find a third derivative. In this one, we are looking for the third derivative. That means we're going to need to take the derivative once, take the derivative of that again for the second derivative, and then finally a third derivative. We do have a chain rule here, so we've got a layering or a composition of functions. So my outer function is three, or my outer function is the natural log, and the inner function is 3x. Let's go ahead and start working through these, starting with that first derivative. So the derivative of the natural log is 1 over whatever is on the inside, and what's on the inside is the 3x. I need to do a chain rule now and do the derivative of just that inner function. The derivative of 3x is 3, and we end up with 1 over x. Now I'm anticipating taking another derivative, so I'm going to write this as x to the negative 1. Let's go ahead and do a second derivative now. So the second derivative is going to be the derivative of what we had up above, so x to the negative 1 prime. A nice power rule for this one. So negative 1 comes out in front, so negative 1, x to the negative 1 minus 1. That's going to be negative 1 x to the negative 2. I'm going to leave it in this form because I need to do a third derivative and I need a different color. Okay, so f triple prime of x, I need to take the derivative of my last answer, the derivative that I got for the second one. So as I take this derivative, it's again a nice power rule. So I have negative 1, and then I'm going to take the derivative of my x to the negative 2. So negative 2 x to the negative 2 minus 1. Let's clean up what we can here. Negative 1 times negative 2 is positive 2, and then I get x to the negative 3. Let's go ahead and rewrite that one with no negative exponents, and finally I get that answer of 2 over x cubed. We're going to go back to doing a second derivative, this time with a trig function. So as I apply that first derivative working towards the second derivative, I do have an outer function and an inner function of 2x. The derivative of tangent, hopefully you've got this one memorized, is secant squared of whatever is on the inside. And what I've got there on the inside is 2x. I'm going to follow that with the derivative of the inner function. The derivative of 2x is 2. So I can rewrite this one as 2 secant squared 2x. Now I'm ready for the second derivative. As I'm working through that second derivative, I have got 2, which I can pull out on the outside. That does not affect my derivative, but I've got secant squared 2x. I actually have three different layers here, and you want to peel these apart carefully so that you've got the right order. My first layer, as I apply another chain rule, is the power 2, so that's going to be my outermost layer. My next layer, the second one, is the secant, and the innermost layer, so layer number 3, is 2x. So I'm going to call that one number 3. I'm going to pull the 2 out in front, and let's go ahead and apply this chain rule 
rule and we're going to be applying the chain rule on secant squared of 2x starting with the power 2. The 2 is going to come out in front with respect to everything else. Everything else is secant of 2x. And then my power reduces from 2 down to 1, so nothing else to do there. Okay, so I'm done with layer number 1. Layer number 2 is the secant. The derivative of secant is secant tangent, keeping the innermost function fixed. So this is going to be secant tangent. I'm keeping that innermost function fixed, so this is going to stay 2x and 2x. Finally, I'm going to take the derivative of my innermost function, which is 2x. Its derivative is just 2, and that is on the very end. Now, there is some cleaning up that we can do here for sure. As I'm cleaning things up, I have a 2 times a 2 times a 2. Everything is multiplied, so I can go ahead and regroup. I'm going to write this in white. So I've got 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. I also have a couple of secant squared. So there's a secant squared, or sorry, a secant of 2x. There's a secant of 2x times another secant of 2x. That's where that secant squared on my brain was coming. So that's secant squared of 2x. And then I have my tangent of 2x. I hope these are getting better for you. The nice thing is that you're just applying the rules of derivatives that you've seen before, but do take a look at my other videos and let me know if you've got any questions. Good luck and thanks for watching.